I haven't seen wishes as bad as the ones in today's movie since Skilo wished for a rabbit and a hat with a bat and a 6'4 Impala. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Robert Kurtzman's killer genie flick, Wishmaster. Released in 1997, Wishmaster has a fantastic pedigree. Directed by FX wizard Kurtzman, this one also features cameos from horror veterans like Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and Robert England. Seriously, you'll need a bingo card to keep track of all the cool people in this movie. But enough about that. Can Wishmaster grant itself a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's movie is brought to you by patrons Jennifer B, that rad Eric guy, who totally lives up to his name, and Carl Keeling. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's arbitrary community guidelines nonsense, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Seriously, every little bit helps keep this show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on some credits. Live entertainment? Is this a play? Did I buy a stage version of Wishmaster? I thought they filmed this stuff. Whoa, Wes Craven presents. Glad we could finally get Wes on this show somehow. A Robert Kurtzman film. You probably know Kurtzman better as the K in KNB effects. Uh oh, someone grab a fire extinguisher because the credits are on fire. Starring Tammy Lauren. Fun fact, they originally wanted Dina Myers for the role. And Andrew Divoff. Divoff's done a lot of stuff in his career, but he's probably best known for his work as the Jin in this series of films. Hey, Chris Lemon. We haven't seen him since just before dawn. He's Jack Lemon's son. Jesus, Kane Hodder too? What an embarrassment of riches this movie is. Seriously, tons of cameos from horror icons in this one. Who'd win in a fight? Hodder's Jason or the Jin? Place your bets now. Oh man, Tony Todd too? This movie is spoiling me already. Well, damn, it just keeps getting better. Here's Robert England. We can have a Freddy vs. Jason vs. Candyman subplot here. But we're not done because here's veteran character actor George Buck Flower. We last saw him in John Carpenter's body bags. No official word on whether or not Gretchen Palmer here has a sister named Rosie. Effects courtesy of the KNB team. Jesus, they got Harry Manfredini to do the score. I'm not sure if this is a movie or the lineup at my dream horror movie convention. Say what you will, but these credits have been a real gem so far. Written by Peter Atkins. Fun fact, I wound up at a party with Pete Atkins back in 2000. Super nice guy. Chatted with me for ages without getting annoyed. And with the credits over, it's right to a card. Once in a time before time. Except this one's narrated by Angus Scrim. Fear the Jin. Fear the Jin, eh? No, oh, I do. I had a bad night with some tank array once. Sweet, a PlayStation 1 cutscene. Inside the temple, it's definitely not looking like I Dream of Genie. Huh, guess Jabba got Han Solo again. Oh man, Groot's here too? This movie has everything. Chest burster. I feel like this whole opening scene is just a giant montage to things nerds love, and I'm here for it. Jafar here is like, out of my way, I gotta find Iago. This guy is clearly not comfortable in his own skin, so he sheds it. Are we gonna get a Ray Harryhausen Sinbad homage here too? Cause I sure hope so. Oh yeah, this guy's definitely got a bone to pick with this other dude. Give me a hell yeah! And this guy looks sort of like Baraka from Mortal Kombat. I feel like this is probably what happens when a genie from Wish.com fulfills your dreams. Anyway, Jafar's had enough. Stop! No more wishes. I beg your majesty, silence. Man, check out Divoff's makeup. Fantastic. It took him three and a half hours to get it on every day and then another 90 minutes to remove it. Yeah, since we're here, I guess we might as well get some exposition. Three wishes granted to the one who woke him lets him open the gateway between the worlds. Guessing that's gonna be important later. Whoa, did my edible just kick in or what? Now Jafar is gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Look, if you just go away, I'll give you this giant cherry Jolly Rancher. <laughs> Look at the gin. He's like, cherry you say? But as Admiral Akbar warned us all, it's a trap. And now the gin is stuck inside that delicious Jolly Rancher for eternity. That settled, we head back to the future. Hey, it's Robert England, Ted Raimi, and Intruders Danny Hicks. England's got some freight coming in. A statue of the pre-Islamic god, Ahura Mazda. Oh yeah, Ahura Mazda. I think he's the guy who designed the Miata. Zoom, zoom. Live look at me getting ready to write this script. 
needs more booze. And also, hey, that's Day of the Dead's Joe Pilato, drinking and operating heavy machinery. I mean, what could go wrong? And so much for Ted Raimi. Diplomatic immunity has just been revoked. You kids even remember the end of Lethal Weapon 2? Christ, I'm old. England's like, we're gonna need another Raimi. But the news is even worse, because here's the Jolly Rancher inside that broken statue. And Cletus here absconds with it. Sweet, I can put this in a ring and finally propose to Brandine. I'm not sure where we're headed next, but this place feels like a bust. And this guy kinda looks like elderly Bill Murray if you squint. Oh, and he's got the ruby. These gemologists are definitely interested in taking it off his hands, too. Tell you what. I want to have my best appraiser take a look at this. Shannon here is going to fill out a receipt for you. 20 bucks says he comes back and says, this is a gem from one of those candy rings and it'll take it for 50 cents. And now it's time for my low-key favorite thing. People in movies playing tennis poorly. Man, I haven't seen hacking that bad since Jason. And it's a good thing they're playing tennis too because there's love in the air and this guy's going to shoot his shot. I thought maybe we could go out. Now, if my screenwriting skills hold true, Josh here is about to get banished to the friend zone. You are my best friend. Do you know how hard a friend is to find? <laughs> Nailed it. Poor Josh. Forever alone. Oh yeah, giving her your sweaty, smelly cap will surely change her mind. If that doesn't work, maybe gift her your jock strap you left in your gym locker for ten months. I'll see you later. Wait, did that actually work? Anyway, she's got the hat on and probably has lice now. Building establishing shot. Inside, these two are getting stoned. Hell yeah. No, not like that. I mean, they're checking out this giant ruby thing. Oh god, now she's rubbing it. Should we be seeing this? She must have terrible vision because that thing is huge and she still needs a microscope to check it out. Ah, magnification setting 900. With that and a pair of tweezers, you could find your dick. <laughs> Junior high jokes never get old. And jump scare. Uh, the what? Gemologist Karen here isn't happy with what she's found, so she's looking for a manager. Well, I don't know. I'm no gemologist. <laughs> um, okay, so why did she bring it here? She wants him to run some tests, but he's like... I owe ya. Well, how about that dinner then? From tennis to basketball. This movie sure is sporty. Nice brick! If we gather up all these bricks, we could probably build a homeless shelter for your mom. It's very good. Do you know why you missed? Because I suck? Mm -mm. You didn't have stillness. Great. She's one part Pat Summit, and one part B-Ball Yoda. Time doesn't exist. The other players do not exist. Jesus, she's like a hoops version of Heidegger. Heidegger, that's a deep cut. Where else are you going to find an existentialist reference in a Wishmaster video on this website? Man, computers were huge in the 90s. Um, should he laser that thing? Isn't that just going to split the beams and destroy everything? Back at practice, the Jin is not happy being woken from his slumber. Normally this would be football practice, but I guess it's basketball practice instead. Yeah, told you this was going to go bad. Dude just ruined a whole high-tech lab by running an unauthorized experiment so he could get a date. I'm sure his bosses will be fine with that. Holy shit, a payphone? Do you kids even remember payphones? I bet she's just calling to cancel their date. Wait, that's the gin? Why does he look like Manborg? Kind of looks like one of the mutants from this island Earth. Tell me where your inner Ossiter is located. This Jin isn't all bad, though. He's going to ease Josh's pain for him. Oh, yeah, Jin is looking great. He might want to wish for some moisturizer. I mean, there are some strong Uncle Frank vibes here. And here comes Karen. Does this mean I don't have to go on the date? Then it gets worse. He was my best friend. Couldn't even escape the friend zone by dying. Press F to pay respects. But don't worry, officer, I can't believe it's not Denzel Washington is on the case. Since that plotline doesn't seem to be going anywhere, let's check in on George Buck Flower. Excuse me, lady, you gotta help out an old older boy? I feel like he plays a homeless guy a lot. Whoa, it's Reggie Bannister! From ice cream man to pharmacist, Reggie's moving up in the world. And we're treated to what really is a great moment in horror film acting. Fuck you. No, fuck you! Look, I'd watch an odd couple spinoff where Reggie the Pharmacist and George Buck Flower the Bum shared an apartment. I'm just saying. I own the sidewalk. I pay taxes. I got your taxes swinging. George Buck Flower is stealing this whole movie right now. His diatribe is interrupted by the Jin, who's apparently cosplaying the merchant in Resident Evil 4. What are you buying? Turns out George is buying some sweet revenge. The death of your enemies would consider a bargain. I do like the way you think. 
what would you have happen? Hey, should only get cancer. Looks like Reggie's already in stage four. I guess the gym wasn't scared straight by this though, because he's taken up smoking. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm living in flavor country. Meanwhile, Karen, aka Alex, is in grieving mode, so she has a friend over. I'm really sorry about Josh. I know how close you guys were. Oh, us? We were just friends. Acquaintance is the best, really. And now she's gonna give us a masterclass in acting. Must not look at the camera. Must not emote. Her sister's not buying that she's responsible for the exploding opal. Do you have any idea how crazy that sounds? I mean, it does sound pretty crazy. Maybe we should ask Lance Henriksen what he thinks. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and we get some exposition. Shocker, Alex here might be crazy. You're imagining things just like the last time. Ah, oh, sweet, the Yule Log even got a cameo. Which leads to a flashback. Say what you will, but Alex's sister is looking pretty hot. But then she's late for football practice. Definite T2 vibes here. She looks like a budget Linda Hamilton. Anyway, her new doubles partner looks great. It's like they dug up Vita Scarolitis. <laughs> That's some deep cut tennis humor right there. And probably too soon. Double football practice. I feel like we might be abusing the dream sequences here. I've got my eye on you, movie. The next day, she's working the docks. I'm looking for a dock worker named Etchison. Fun fact, Etchison is a nod to writer Dennis Etchison. Wishmaster pays homage to a lot of horror writers this way. England is named after Charles Beaumont. There's Doug Clegg and more. Anyway, turns out Etchison is the dude who stole the giant Jolly Rancher earlier. Building establishing shot. Oh, hey, Robert England's still in this movie. He's like, I'm your boyfriend now, Alexandra. Yeah, <laughs> great. They got Carrot Top in this movie. Well, that or Sideshow Bob. Over in the morgue, it appears our Jin is looking for a new meat suit. How fortunate is it that he finds an Andrew Divoff corpse looking all fresh and lovely? Back at England's place, he's showing Alex around. Man, he must really be raking in those Elm Street royalties. This is a baller pad. Hey, that's the Pazuzu statue from The Exorcist. Alex, of course, has questions. Yes, what exactly is Ahura Mazda? Well, it was a concept car. It's gonna be the new RX-7, but never went into production. Back at med school, the Jin is basically goodwill hunting his way through doctor college. I'll just work on one of these cadavers while no one's around. But Yahoo Sirius here is not happy. Since he doesn't want to see what's happening, the Jin grants his wish. I feel like this Jin is very literal in his interpretation of things people want. And Sideshow Bob is not even remotely happy about any of this. You bastard! No, no, you can do it better than that. Show him how to do it, Linda Day George. Bastard! Bastard! Oh, sweet, it's an homage to Face Off. Andrew Divoff is like a more chinny version of Robert Davi. Back at England's place, he's shooting a shot for Alex by inviting her to a party, but he's about to get shut down. Well, thank you. I'd like to, but I think I may be busy. Man, this lady banishes everyone to the friend zone. Maybe it was the right call, though, because Professor Durlith here doesn't seem to be a fan. Oh yeah, what an insufferable prick that man is. And if you're keeping score at home, her name is an homage to August Durlith. We had a Finney in here earlier that I forgot to mention, too. Basically, Durleth is a professor of exposition, and she's telling us all the stuff we saw in the prologue. A court sorcerer is said to have imprisoned an evil spirit within it. But of course, Alex isn't buying the whole genie thing. A djinn. A genie? Forget what our culture has made of the djinn. Forget Barbara Eden. Whoa, whoa, I don't want to forget Barbara Eden. Anyway, while they're gabbing, the djinn's makeover is still going. Looking slick. Not gonna lie, though. He was cooler looking as a monster. Turns out he's not just here for some retail therapy, he's here to make some deals of his own and he's got a real humdinger lined up for Ariella. Say, I wish to be beautiful forever. I, I wish to be beautiful forever. Ah, uh -huh, sweet, she basically wished to be Kim Cattrall and Mannequin. At this point I've concluded Alex has exactly one facial expression. It's basically constipated. While she's here working on her acting, Divoff's making this dude at the police station go crazy. It was like that time Mackay Pfeiffer shot up the precinct on Homicide, Life on the Street. Man, I miss Homicide. While they're busy subduing the perp, the Jin is checking out Alex's business card. Ah, good coloring. And the lettering is something called Cillian Grail. Props to you if you know that reference. The Jin is transfixed by the card quality, and our perp is breaking free. This effect is a real jaw dropper. Then everyone blasts them. 
I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be hard to get the lead out now. Back at her place, it looks like Alex got an advanced copy of the new Harry Potter book. The Stone of the Secret Fire. Anyway, the point of all this lazy voiceover exposition is that the Jin wants to bring back his entire race into the human world and he needs to charge the stone to do it. Oh, and this part. He must then activate it by finding the human who woke him into this world and granting him three wishes. Oh shit, it's Kane Hodder. Hodder and the Jin are gonna have a battle of wills and surprisingly, Kane Hodder wins. I want you to leave. Damn it, I really should have thought this through. But then Kane blows it. I have to get inside. Well, now you'd have to go through me. Edibles kicking in again. Man, Divoff is so great in this movie. You can just tell he's having a blast in every scene. I also love that he's basically supernatural Monty Hall. Everything's let's make a deal with this dude. Would you like it to be 100 times as valuable? Naturally, this dullard wishes for a million bucks, which he's about to get in a totally unexpected way. You've forgotten to fill in the beneficiary. <laughs> oh, silly. It's my son, Nick. <laughs> we eventually catch back up with Alex and check out that sweet flip phone. That call's only costing her 25 cents a minute. Unless she's Roman, then it's like a grand. You kids don't even know the struggle of early cell phones. <laughs> Look at her sister. Thanks for using up all my minutes. And it's about to get worse because now Divoff wants to use it too. Can I borrow your phone? I swear it's local. Apartment establishing shot. Oh yeah, I really like what you've done with the place. It's a real 90s grandma vibe happening. Must not emote. Now she's getting a call from director Robert Kurtzman. Look, Tammy, we need more from this performance. I mean, it's not too late to recast Dina Meyer. Since that's not very interesting, let's see what the gin is up to. Oh, he's collecting everyone's souls. This movie is definitely tripping on shrooms or something, judging by this filming. Look, Mr. Kurtzman, I'm emoting. Is this what you wanted? Alex then heads back to Professor Derleth. Stone is charged. It's charged with people's souls, fed with their fear. And the gin is after me. I need to know what the hell to do. Derleth's like, are you high, girl? Because you sound higher than Everest right now. And if I've learned anything in life, it's that you should give someone who's talking crazy plenty of alcohol. Hmm, beef eater, Cuddy Sark, but no J&B. Maybe the gin can hook her up. Sounds like the professor is already drunk too. <laughs> he would have a fine old time, wouldn't he? <laughs> Alex is like, time to get you to bed, Grandma. You're sloshed. If you guess that the professor is actually the gin, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Not gonna lie, Divoff looks more like a guy who tried to sell you a high mileage Mercedes than a genie with cosmic powers. And it looks like they got a little overzealous with the exfoliating at the day spa. But don't worry, because now it's time for another great moment in horror film acting. She could wish to be dead, you lying sack of shit! I showed her my true face. Her reaction wasn't very flattering. <laughs> oh yeah, top-notch work. And now we're gonna play the wishing game. What happened if I wished you dead? And just keep wishing for more wishes, personally. Which was clearly a better strategy than her wish actually was. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Try not to screw it up this time, Alex. I wish to know what you are. Oh, come on. That's another terrible wish. If this chick is all that stands between us and our genie overlords, we're doomed. Oh, shit. Did she wish for a live action La Blue girl? Maybe she's not as terrible at wishing as I thought. I am despair. Give off channeling his inner pinhead here, and man, I am all for it. I feel like they shot this inside a lava lamp. And we've got a slimy rubber puppet. Great, this chick is just wasting wishes at this point. I wish I was in my apartment. Here's me responding to all those guys calling me about my car's extended warranty. Fuck you! Oh yeah, she's totally off to see a manager now. You guys are in trouble. Wow, she drives a Saturn. That takes me back. The car for people who thought a Camry was too fancy. Anyway, the gin's Lenny Kravitz needs as much work as my JR. Going my way. She eventually arrives at the party, but Tony Todd's like, Hey, after you make his three wishes, can I get you to say Candyman into a mirror five times? Alex heads in, and the gin basically turns Tony Todd into a half-assed Harry Houdini. <laughs> Dude's knocked off Jason and Candyman so far. Will he get Freddy too? Inside, it looks like Sis is busted. You know, because of the statue in the background. The gin, it turns out, does not care for this party, so he's gonna liven things up. 
Hey, who wished to be the T-1000? And say what you will, but this dude has a real poker face. Hey, that's director Robert Kurtzman. He's clearly feeling pretty wired. I think this dude got assimilated by the thing. Oh, hi there. And he eventually catches up with Alexa. You bastard. Come on, you can do better. Linda Day George, take it away again. Bastard! Bastard! But it does appear she's found a loophole in his three wishes plan. What are you gonna do? Kill me? Oh shit, Poseidon's alive. Someone's about to get executed for heresy. She flees and runs right into Robert England. I will say, it's pretty wild when running into Freddy Krueger is the less dangerous option. He's given her the international sign for give me the Heimlich, but she's too oblivious to even realize it. Oh yeah, I had a really wicked cold once and coughed up something that looked exactly like this. I mean, I haven't seen that kind of gut Ralph and since the gates of hell, honestly. Hey, it's Goro! Mortal Kombat! Ooh, and another cameo. It's Howard Berger with the beard, the B in K and B effects. The statues come alive, and this dude takes an arrow in the knee. So long, adventuring career. Then Berger takes a ball to the face. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that. I mean the ball of this mace. Getting killed by a statue, you could say he died of an art attack. But I also will say it's like history is really coming alive here. Holy shit, now even Sven Gulli is killing people. I got an army on Wish.com, and this is what they sent me. And to add insult to injury, the Jin has put Alex's sister into a storyboard from AHA's Take On Me video. Oh Christ, the walls are melting. Worst trip ever. But just as things look their bleakest, she makes one last wish. I wish Mickey Torelli hadn't been drinking on the job two days ago. And with that, the giant cherry Jolly Rancher starts sucking the gin back inside its sweet gooey center. Plus a lot of stuff explodes, and everyone loves explosions. The gin is like, this sucks. Oh no, is this movie starting over? And Friendzone is alive again. I'm not really sure this constitutes a happy ending. But let's give this guy some props because he's done the impossible. He escaped from the friend zone. Huzzah. And deep in the statue, the djinn is still alive. So, what have we learned from Wishmaster? Well, for starters, that Andrew Divoff should absolutely be a bigger star. He kills it in this role, literally. Beyond that, Wishmaster is a lot of fun and a throwback to an era when the studio still made modestly budgeted horror movies that were kind of silly and fun. But enough about that. Can the djinn wish his way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Wishmaster delivers. With the KMB team involved, you know this one isn't going to skimp on the effects. As such, we're treated to peeled off faces, phlegm monsters, people mutated into monsters, plenty of tentacles, and more. The gore isn't the disturbing, hyper-realistic kind, it's played mostly for laughs and screams and actually turning your stomach. But there's enough here to give Wishmaster a very respectable three barf bag rating. This one's a sick and fun little flick. Looking for another movie from the 90s filled with carnage, great practical effects, and a horror film icon? Then be sure to check out my review of Mosquito. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.